So I got this question that says, how do I work with a credit card download that downloads all the different accounts, each one representing each card or user, and then how do I reconcile it? This happens with Bank of America and Chase credit cards a lot. So I'm gonna answer that question by connecting my QuickBooks Online into a Chase credit card. Then I'm gonna show you kind of what happens when you connect to the bank, and then it gives you a whole bunch of options in terms of what accounts you can connect. And then I'm gonna show you how they need to be configured in the chart of accounts in order for all these sub accounts or credit card user accounts to kind of be part of one unified account that then you can reconcile at the end of the period. So I'm gonna go into banking and then click on connect account. Then I'm gonna choose my company that I'm gonna to connect to. So I'm gonna click on chase. And then I'm gonna go ahead and enter my credentials to log in into my Chase account. So once I connect to my bank, it's gonna give me all the accounts or all the sub accounts that are going to be associated with this one account that has multiple users uh, that we're gonna download into QuickBooks. So you, as you see on the screen, these are all individual credit cards inside of my overall credit card account that each represents a different physical card and or a different user using the cards. So I actually have to connect all of them into QuickBooks and then I kind of have to put them together as one unified account. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them and I'm gonna go and create an account for each one of them. So I'm gonna click on the drop down menu where it says enter account type and then I'm gonna click on add new. So first I wanna create a credit card account and then I'm gonna call this one Chase Card. And this is gonna be like the parent account. So I created an account called Chase Card and then click on Save and Close. Now I have to go one step further and create a sub account under Chase Card. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to Add New and then I'm gonna call this one Hector4660. So I'm typically gonna use the name of the user of the credit card so I know as an accountant uh, who, who's the individual user of the card and that might be, give me some context in terms of the category or the type of expenditure. So I put the name of the user and then I put the last four digits. Then I'm gonna click on click a sub account off and then I wanna make sure I select Chase card. Now under account type, this needs to be a credit card type. So it's a credit card type, call this one Hector4660 and then it's a sub account of Chase card, perfect. So now I'm gonna click on save and close. And now notice that this Hector4660 is a sub account of Chase card. So I'm gonna go to the next one, go to add new, select account type credit card, put the name of the user, and the last four digits of the card, then click on sub account off, and then select the Chase card as the parent account, then click on save and close. Then I'm gonna go to the next one, go to add new, change this to credit card, the name of the user, the last four digits of the account, is sub account off, and select Chase card, save and close. Go to the next one, add new, make it a credit card, name of the user, that last four digits of the account, is sub account off, select the parent account, save and close, and the last one here, a new credit card account type, name of the user, is sub account off, and then make it a sub account of the Chase card, then click save and close. So now that all the sub accounts now have their own specific sub accounts and now, and they're connected into QuickBooks and they're connected to a chart of accounts, then I can pick how far back I want to go in terms of the download. Now, depending, depending on what you're trying to do, this might get a little bit tricky. So if you're only trying to go back the last working month, the idea is that you physically take the credit card statement, the last credit card statement you have in your hand that will have a beginning balance, and you're gonna pick that to be the start date. Now, if you wanna go back 
far, like a year or two years, that's all going to be based on what the bank allows you to download. So in some cases, you have a limitation of 90 days. In some cases, you can go up to two years, depending on the bank. So just for the sake of exercise, I'm actually going to pull up my most recent statement from the bank, and then I'm just going to bring the last working month. So I went ahead and pulled the last known statement for this card, because that's really as far back as I'm going to go. As I mentioned earlier, it depends on the situation in terms of how far back you're going to go. And then I'm going to pick the beginning balance, the previous balance, uh, as the one that I'm going to enter as the beginning balance on this account. We're going to go back to that uh, in a second, but it's really, really important that we have the statement in front of us so we can use it as a reference. And then we're going to, and then we're going to take a look at the opening balance date which is going to be the beginning balance or as far back as we're going to go with this. So we're going to tell QuickBooks that we're going to go back all the way to December 27, 2019 and bring everything from there up to today. And then we'll put here 12, 27, 2019. Perfect. Now, one little important thing, uh, well, not little, but the really big important thing is you can actually click on the back button and see how far back your credit card goes. And it would actually indicate the minute you get to the point where you can't go back any further, it will get to the point where it'll start uh, fading out or telling, not letting you click on those dates. So this one can actually go back all the way to February 5th, 2018. So you want to kind of test the waters, how far back you want to go. That's one way to do it. So you want to be very intentional about the date that you pick here. I'm going to leave this December 27 date because again, it is the same uh, beginning date, opening date for the specific statement that is sort of the oldest statement that I want to bring related to this download. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on connect. So once my connection is set, I can actually browse through all the sub accounts that are connected uh, through the bank directly. So as long as I click on any of these, you're going to see the transactions in the bottom that were downloaded. So I can go or cycle through any of these cards and then see the actual expen expenses related to these transactions. Now, one really important thing, I want to go in there and figure out which of these accounts have the payments associated with it because one of these is going to take bring in all the payments and one of them should carry that big proverbial beginning balance. So I'm going to click on received here so I can kind of sort these through received and see which of these, I'm actually going to cycle through them, see which one has payments associated with it. So um, as long as I cycle through them, I should find the one that does. So, okay, perfect. This is a great, good example here. So this particular one, this one called Herbert 4458 is the one that's going to house all the payments. And you can tell that by seeing where, where the payments are being downloaded to. So this is the one that we're going to enter the beginning balance for. Now, if you notice, if you actually add up these three numbers, these are the three payments, including that refund for $299, these three add up to about $24,000. I'm going to go back into my statement real quick and just verify that this makes sense. And notice that right here, these are all the payments or credits that entered uh, in this account. I'm actually going to scroll down and see the specific individual ones somewhere. Okay, there they are right here. See, so right here at the end, at the end, you see the three payments here, $299, 5019 604 if I go back I actually see the exact amounts there so I'm confirming that these payments did come into the credit card and this one right here called Herbert 4458 is the one that's going to bring in the payments which is the same one I'm going to use to enter beginning balances so I'm going to click on the gear menu and then I'm going to go into chart of accounts and I'm going to go look for the Herbert 4458 account and then I'm going to click here where it says view register now notice that when I created the download, QuickBooks created this bogus beginning balance uh, transaction, trying to figure out how to plug a beginning balance in order to try to get the running balance to work correctly. Obviously, this is way wrong. So typically, we're just going to delete that or we're going to change that with that beginning balance amount from this, which is right here, 24,988.88. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that into here and I'm going to replace the original bogus amount that QuickBooks created via the connection, and I'm going to make that the beginning balance. I'm also going to date this back to December uh, 27, uh, which is actually the real beginning balance of that statement, and then click on Save. 
And then yes. So now I'm gonna go back to my chart of accounts and I have to do the same thing for each of these sub accounts. So I'm gonna go to the view register of this sub account and take this beginning balance transaction, delete it, get rid of it. Go back, let's take a look at the second card, go to view register, look at this beginning balance, delete it, gone. Back to credit card, let's look at the next account that has a weird beginning balance there, grab it and delete it. And let's go back to the chart of accounts and there should be, oh, no more, that's it, perfect. So I should only have one account that has a beginning balance, which is the one where the payments are being registered into, which this is sort of the default account. And I, I went back in it and I changed it and I made it the one true beginning balance. So now I'm starting at the right point. I got a beginning balance. I know the exact starting point for this credit card. Now I can start categorizing all the transactions and then reconcile at the end. So let's go back into banking. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go in and categorize each of these uh, transactions. Now check in the description below an entirely different video where I explain how to categorize transactions. So I'm gonna do this really, really quick just so we can get to the point that we can actually reconcile the bank. So I went ahead and categorized all my expenses and you're gonna notice uh, you can cycle through all these cards and notice they all have a check mark that says all done and that means they don't have any more pending uh, transactions. So I've, I've taken every single uh, category and I put it in every single transaction and I put it in the right category. And again, check the description below for the video where I explain that process, which is another you know 30 minute video that explains uh, account classification and that sort of thing. So once I'm done, I should be able to now reconcile the credit card to make sure that everything from that December 27th date to that statement ending date that we want to reconcile, reconciles down to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the gear menu on the top right and then click on where it says reconcile. Then I'm going to go ahead on the drop down menu for accounts. I'm not going to pick any of the sub accounts because I'm not going to individually reconcile each sub account. I'm just going to reconcile the overall parent account that I created before I assigned all the sub accounts to it. So I'm going to reconcile this parent account here called Chase Card. And you will notice that the beginning balance, the one that I modified when I went into the register and I put it to match the exact uh, credit card statement, it's going to show up here. And that's exactly where I want to be at the beginning starting point. So then I'm going to go pull up my actual credit card statement. And then I'm going to go to new balance. And this is the number that I want to reconcile. It's 15,005.37. It's now I want to reconcile that in QuickBooks, there's specifically that asset running balance of this credit card up to the point that I'm going to reconcile, which in this case is January 26. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that number. And I'm going to paste it here where it says ending balance. And then under ending date, here's when I pick January 26. Let's just double check that that's correct. Yes, January 26 is the ending date for that statement. And then I'm going to click on start reconciling. Now you will notice something sort of semi magical here, which is all my charges and all my payments because I haven't entered anything else into QuickBooks are automatically checked because they were downloaded through the bank and now I actually effectively have a zero difference. Now the reason why that happened is because I didn't enter any transactions manually into the credit card. I worked 100% from the bank feed and when I connected uh, the, trans the, the, the accounts, I made them all into this unified account and I gave everything a category and nothing is left pending for us to do. So at this point, I just click on finish now. And that completes the process of connecting credit cards, making them all sub accounts, categorizing them, and then finally reconciling them so you can be sure that everything that came in through the bank digitally, it's now matching and it's in QuickBooks. Hope that was useful. I'll see you in the next one.